Are people born into a cursed life owed happiness as recompense for their suffering, or is happiness something only those who strive for it can earn? This is an idea that is part of one of the many questions raised in Part 6 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stone Ocean, as a majority of the cast are people born into the world with a cursed heritage of some sort that resulted in a near-endless life of strife for them. From Jolene's Joestar connection being part of the reason her father is absent from her life, as well as her imprisonment, to Foo Fighters, who was created by Poochie with a single purpose and no sense of personal identity. Though one person who I feel represents this theme the best is the Earth Echo excavating Englishman eagerly encroaching on an enlarged ego, Donatello Versus, and his stand, Underworld. Donatello Versus is one of Dio's four known illegitimate sons, as well he could be considered the secondary antagonist near the end of Part 6's story. As much like all the other sons of Dio, Donatello inherited pieces of his father's own personality, adopting both his quick thinking and ruthless nature, as well as a desire for power, which eventually led him down the path of betraying the man who bestowed him of the knowledge of his own power, that being Father Pucci, acting almost entirely because Donatello believed that the world owed him for the bad hand he was dealt by fate. But before we get too deep into that, let's first understand the meaning behind his name and design. Starting first with his name, which is actually a bit strange, as while it does work with Part 6's own naming theme of fashion brands, it is slightly changing up the formula. Now his name appears to be directly lifted from the famous Italian fashion designer Donatella Versace, known best for her work within her brother Gianni's luxury fashion brand Gianni Versace, which is often shortened to just Versace. And during the full run of Part 6's serialization, Donatella was the acting chief executive officer of Versace, so her name is famously associated with the brand. Though Araki changed the name slightly, first of course using Donatello, the masculine form of Donatella, for obvious reasons. As well, his name, Donatello, means gift from God, and given that Dio's name directly translates to God, I feel that this was quite intentional especially given Donatello's own motivations later into the story. Now it is his family name that is slightly modified from the fashion brand, as, at least according to the Romanji, while the ver remains slightly similar, now being said like ver and very, the Italian C has been softened into a more English C, so it sounds like an S. So it is more accurate to pronounce his name as versus or verisus. Wait, no! Now, design-wise, it would appear like Donatello was definitely meant to resemble his father more than the other Part 6 original brothers, with his natural blonde hair and calm mannerisms. Though it's possible that his hair turned blonde at a young age, much like Giorno, as this long black streak in his hair looks a bit like hairline roots. Though, it could have always been blonde as a kid, and this is just a design quirk, though I thought it was interesting enough to point out. As we know that Dio's son's hair can change colors. Another cool detail that ties him back to his father is how he was kept obscured or in shadows right up until his main arc, which feels like a direct reference to Shadow Dio during Part 3. Though, when we get a good look at his full design and his outfit, the most standout detail about him is his choker, which has a swirl pattern on it that is seemingly put there to match up with a segment of the Versace logo. Or who knows, maybe he's just a really big Dreamcast fan, you know, that whole European bloodline and all. As well for the rest of his design, the deep cut v-neck and forehead covering hair partly reminds me of Richard Glady from the spring and summer Versace ad campaign from the early 2000s. Though I should state, this is just a general assumption based on Glady's own brand connection to Donatello and there's no concrete pose or statement by Iraqi that proves their connection as I believe a lot of Donatello was meant to resemble his father, though the references to Dio don't end just at Donatello's main design, as we see even more references to Dio in Donatello's own stand, Underworld. Underworld is a close-range stand which takes the shape of a strange humanoid with a few key notable details about it. Firstly, the arms of the stand have a strange arm brace shape to them, which, while reminding me of stands earlier in the part, also kind of look a bit like Chocolate Disco's design from Part 7. As well, the shoulders of the stand are strange with these concave segments, reminding me a bit of the texture treads of a shoe, which, 
might actually be intentional, but we'll get to that later. Though most importantly, on the chest of the stand there are two symbols. First being a slightly altered version of the design seen on Donatello's choker, which I mentioned might be in part a reference to Versace's own logo, but across from it is the Star of Life which is a globally recognized symbol of emergency care and is often printed on the side of emergency response vehicles like ambulances. The six sides of the star represent the six steps of emergency care, that being detection, reporting, responding, on-scene care, care in transit, and finally, definitive care. As well, the symbol in the middle of the star is the ancient Greek symbol of medicine, the Rod of Asclepius. Now, this symbol likely manifested on the stand due to Donatello's own awakening within a hospital, but could also tie back to his own life of strife which saw him injured more frequently than others, so he probably spent a good amount of time around or near a hospital. And finally, the most strange detail about Underworld's design comes in the form of the headwear attached to the stand. To me, it looks like a mixture of professional swimmer's goggles mixed together with handrails or tubing that is sucker secured to the head. Now, the goggle aesthetic could be done intentionally, in a way to reference back to the world and its own diver-like design. Though, it should be stated that this could be a case of Araki just experimenting with the design, as he mentioned in the Jojo Veller comment on the design that he really likes how Underworld has the things just shooting out the eyes. And it wouldn't be the first time that he gave a specific look to a character because he liked drawing a specific effect. An example of this being Kars' own brilliant bone blade, as Araki had it protrude out from Kars' arm because he really liked drawing tearing skin. Though the way that the tubing goes from the top of the head to the back of the stand actually reminds me a bit of Kamen Rider Sussword's mask form. Though if I were to guess a major influence for the design, I would assume that it's in reference to the Matrix, and specifically when Neo wakes up from the Matrix, with the tubing running all across their body. As well, that reference relates in part to how the stand itself functions, as Underworld claims itself to be an embodiment of and directly connected to the Earth's own memory, which has allowed the stand one major ability. It can essentially recreate anything that has happened on the ground. The way you do this is if Underworld, or the user, digs their hand into something, this action of digging can unearth the memory of whatever has happened within the range of the stand. The range, of course, being approximately the entire city of Orlando, Florida. Which is a bit unclear, we don't know if the range is the size of Orlando, or if Orlando is the range itself. Either way, pretty big range. Now, while the excavated memory cannot be changed or steered away from its faded path, the things excavated from the Earth can be used in multiple ways. Firstly, once excavated, Donatello can gain full knowledge of everything he's unearthed, such as the memories of the person that he dug up, as seen when he gets a phone number from Jolene's own memory, or being able to examine someone's person as well as their belongings, as seen best when he digs around in an excavated Poochie's jacket to find Weather Report's memory disc that he then snatches from the real one later on. As this aspect of his stand, gives Donatello an immediate advantage if given the time to prepare, and allows him to manipulate a fight well beyond the expectations of his opponent. Next, much like the stand Judgment, Donatello can create physical manifestations of these memories using the dirt around him. This can be used to attack a target, either psychologically, like with Hermes and Sportsmax, or physically, seen best when he summoned the sheer, unrelenting power of 1974 Super Bowl 8 Miami Dolphins to attack Jolene, with Donatello even specifically mentioning that he dug up Larry Chonka from that game, as during that Super Bowl, Larry went on to earn the status of the first runner back to ever be named Super Bowl MVP. Though, unfortunately for Donatello, this shouldn't have worked, as Super Bowl 8 is well known for taking place specifically in Houston, Texas, which just falls ever so slightly out of his already comedically large range. Though it's just as likely that this memory of Larry Chonka comes from a game played in Orlando, so it's not that big of a deal. Though the other thing he can do with his excavated memories is trap a target within them, which is seen best when Jolene and Hermes are trapped inside a plane on a crash course or when Jolene gets caught in a fighter jet about to crash down, with the purpose of an attack like this being to make those stuck inside these doomed memories meet the same tragic fate. As well, the recreated people inside these memories are fully aware of the situation about to go down, 
but remained seemingly calm and somewhat helpful, explaining in detail the results as well. Such as when the flight attendant calmly explains why the head of another passenger is lodged through her stomach as if it was normal. The fighter pilot also explains why the ejector seat won't work because he didn't use it. It is actually quite a helpful stand in that scenario. And the reason that the people in these memories function this way likely has to do with how Donatello is able to absorb information using Underworld. Now, the only way to avoid dying while trapped in one of these doomed memories is to find a loophole in the scenario. For example, in the case of the crashing plane, there were only two seats that were safe as they belonged to the survivors of the crash. Thus, if you sat in the seats, you would remain unharmed, but interestingly enough, the survivors within the memory are also just as safe. So if you found a way to hide within one of the survivors, then you would be as safe as sitting in one of the seats. And unfortunately for the user, there is nothing you can do to stop someone from taking advantage of this weakness, except for pry on their guilt. As well, another aspect of his stand that can be taken advantage of is that the excavated creations can harm stands, such as a pen stolen from an excavated plane memory can be used to harm Underworld without an issue, versus a regular pen that would go right through it. Now, inspiration-wise, Araki claims that the stand design is based off of his current obsession with psychological matters, as well as social issues at the time, though he doesn't really go into specifics on the topic. But, given that this fight was written in the middle of 2002, took place mostly on a plane, and is set specifically in America, it's clearly a reference to the Nightmare at 20,000 feet, duh! Now, name-wise, Underworld seems to have a dual-layered reference to it. Firstly, we have the obvious tie-back to Dio and the world, with both stands containing the name World. As well, Donatello being the only one in the Sons of Dio with a stand with World in it reinforces narratively why he believes he deserves to inherit his father's will. It being called Underworld also suggests that he is still beneath his father in many ways. As well, the name itself is also in direct reference to the British electric music group Underworld, whose most recent album during the serialization of Part 6's manga being Everything Everything, a live album containing their best work, and this could be sort of the inspiration for the name, as Everything Everything dug up songs from Underworld's collective career and repurposed them in a similar nature to how the stand works. Though I feel the aspect of digging into the past as well as a cursed heritage might be in direct reference to 1998's young adult novel written by Lewis Satcher, Holes, which tells the story of Stanley Yelnitz, Stanley is sent to a correctional facility called Camp Green Lake after being caught with stolen baseball shoes intended to be given away to the less fortunate. Though Stanley insists that the shoes just fell straight out of the sky, his bad luck is tied to his hereditary curse, which has run through his family since his great-great-grandfather. Now, this connection itself is reinforced by the backstory we've received for Donatello, where after running away from home at the age of 13 due to hating his stepfather, Donatello was struck in the head by a pair of baseball shoes that seemed to have appeared out of nowhere. These were no ordinary shoes, though. They were autographed by Ichiro Suzuki and intended to be donated to charity. Though, after being arrested for the assumed theft, Donatello told the honest truth about the situation and was harshly punished for it, being sentenced to six months at a correctional facility, only for the real criminal to confess to the crime sometime later. This backstory almost exactly matches up with the inciting incident for the book Holes, right down to Donatello even being constantly followed by holes which would cause him to wrongfully uncover things. Though there was no gold at the end of Donatello's journey, instead, his hardship was only punished more by the people around him, such as when he tripped and landed on a knife and went to report the stab wound to the guards, they simply beat and yelled at him for digging up their hidden weapons. Then after the doctor fixed his wound, it continued to grow worse and worse, oozing extra pus and even the worms from the ground where he fell. From here, he grew deathly ill, but after he recovered from the illness, he wasn't greeted by his stand. Instead, he felt a need to isolate himself from the rest of the world, as everywhere he would go, it would cause hardship for him. Though, as you might suspect, just like how his brother Rakeel's panic attacks can be attributed to his stand acting out of his control, Donatello's underworld was what was constantly digging up trouble around him. Though it is this ability that gave Donatello an amazing sense of perception. 
with him being able to discern what type of ingredients are in a dish simply by the taste of it, and by sight he was able to get the exact measurements of another person. This is all due in part to Underworld constantly digging up and relaying this information to Donatello outside of his knowledge. Though, after Pucci made Donatello very aware of his power, he began not only feeling better about his situation, but growing a desire to take back from the world which stole from him. He began to see anyone in a position of authority as someone who was holding him back, wanting to knock him down. This included Pucci, who encouraged Donatello to be cautious and aware of an opponent's strength, only to have his words twisted by Donatello. Seeing the priest as looking down on him, someone no different than the judge or the prison guard who ruined his life. And it is the plight of Donatello that is almost sympathetic, as even though he fights against our protagonist, his motivation is understandable and kind of relatable to some degree. He wants validation and recompense for the wrongful hardship that he suffered. Jolene, the protagonist of Stone Ocean, is the same way, though where he steps over the line of relatability to villain is when Donatello, out of desperation to kill Jolene and Hermes, not only drags disabled children into a crashing plane to clog up the two safe seats, even mocking Jolene saying that she could easily escape the danger by pushing a child into harm's way, but the guilt would destroy her from within. But to make no room for any survivors, he then proceeds to add more children than necessary to fully clog up any chance of hope for Jolene and her maids. And if not for their quick thinking, would have resulted in an entirely needless loss of life. This action is even questioned by Pucci afterwards, asking if Donatello does not feel the same guilt that he mocked Jolene with. But Donatello simply deflects the guilt onto Jolene for forcing his hand on the matter, making him have to do this. And that's why Donatello is a perfect example of a Rocky's best type of villains. As he explains in Manga Theory and Practices, what makes a villain truly unforgivable is their willingness to use innocent lives to achieve what they want. He of course uses Funny Valentine as an example, though I believe Donatello is just as great of an example of this writing style as well, as he acts as a great foil to Jolene's character right down to the designs of their stance. As, in a lot of ways, Donatello and Jolene's history is similar. They are both from cursed bloodlines, wrongfully imprisoned, and grew up without a father. Which, according to Araki, these traits, plus the lack of that parental figure, specifically shape these people into who they are now. Though, it is the actions that they take in the pursuit of freedom that decides who is truly good or evil. As, in the case of Jolene, she is a strong-willed person. She takes on not only her own burdens, but helps shoulder the burdens of others around her, resulting in the total elevation of everyone in her life as well as showing her own heroic spirit. And it is this strength and ingenuity that is represented best in Stone Free, a stand with a very simple concept that bred creativity and evolution. Jolene comes out as someone strong who will go on no matter the situation and fight till her last breath. Though she is not above kindness and forgiveness, willing to go out of her way to pardon people who feel genuine guilt for the situation she ends up in. Whereas Donatello's obsession with the past and desire to seek revenge on those who wronged him caused him to cause him to become someone who actively passes all the burdens onto others and built up an ego based on a person he's never met or cared about until recently. He is someone who so desperately wants to be remembered as great like his father, but no matter how much he imitates Dio, Donatello's ultimately become something much worse. A selfish, self-destructive sadist. Someone who threw away their humanity not for empowerment, but for acknowledgement. Which takes shape quite well in his stand as Underworld is an ability that actively requires Donatello to wallow in the past, never move on, never evolve. Oh hey look, his stand has no developmental potential either. That's neat. He can only follow what other people have done, which makes him unfit to inherit Dio's heaven. As from Pucci and Dio's perspective, 
Heaven needs to be taken on by someone who will look towards the future and not trouble themselves with the past, as it is clinging on to the past that creates these shackles that binds us. And what Donatello believes is breaking free from those shackles is actually nothing more than a childish rebellion that blows up in his face spectacularly, as it is the thing that Pucci warned him about that actively causes his end, that being his own inexperience in battle and his elevated ego. And because of this, he was not only unable to inherit his father's will, his final moments were spent as a literal tool used by the man he rebelled against to explicitly avoid such a fate. Donatello vs like most of the Sons of Dio, is a great final test for the protagonist, leading right up into the end arc of Stone Ocean, as he not only presents the core themes of Part 6 very well, but shows someone who, if given a different lot in life, could have turned out a whole lot better, or in the case of our protagonist, they might have turned out a whole lot worse. And I'm very excited to see him and Rakeel's character in the upcoming final batch of Stone Ocean's anime. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit helps keep this channel flowing as smoothly as it does. And if you desire to inherit your father's will and achieve heaven, well you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.